I'm Kento Bento. This video is sponsored by Mighty Mug. Avoid disasters at home and at work by getting the unspillable Mighty Mug. It's the mug that won't fall over. If McDonald's were a country, its revenue would make it the 105th largest economy in the world, surpassing the GDP of Estonia, Cambodia, and Afghanistan. The number of McDonald's employees worldwide would be more than the entire population of Iceland, Barbados, and Samoa. It's a big company, but it wasn't always that way. McDonald's was founded on May 15, 1940 in San Bernardino, California, that's over 77 years ago, and has since expanded to 120 countries and territories around the world, serving 68 million customers each day. It took 27 years for the first McDonald's to appear outside of the US, and 31 years to make its way to a second continent. This continent was Asia. And in this video, I'm going to take you through the next 46 years of McDonald's Asian ascension. So which Asian country was the first to open a McDonald's? What did McDonald's have to sacrifice in order to compete with local markets? And how much of Asia is there still left to conquer as of today? We'll get into all of that, so grab a double cheeseburger, maybe some fries, and we'll explore every Asian country to have ever had a McDonald's. Welcome to McAsia. The first Asian McDonald's opened its doors in Tokyo, Japan on July 21st, 1971, beating the first ever European McDonald's in Zandam, Netherlands by only one month. This was made possible by Den Fujita, a wealthy Japanese entrepreneur, the first Asian McDonald's franchisee and the founder of McDonald's Japan. Fujita had revised the menu to include such classics as the Teriyaki McBurger and Chicken Tatsuta, which helped with the brand's initial success in Japan. He also renamed the mascot Ronald McDonald to Donald McDonald due to the difficulties Japanese people have with pronouncing R and L sounds. The expansion of McDonald's has often been seen as a symbol of globalization, helping spread the American way of life, which actually makes Den Fujita's involvement particularly fascinating. During World War II, Fujita's father and two sisters were killed by American forces in bombing raids. Despite this, when Fujita made his way to America in 1967 and stepped foot in a McDonald's restaurant for the first time, he was amazed and inspired by the whole American fast food experience. Now this is all fine and well, but there's one part of the initial history of McDonald's Japan that the company might want to keep hidden. Because in 1971, then Fujita's marketing strategy involved the following statement. The reason Japanese people are so short and have yellow skins is because they have eaten nothing but fish and rice for 2,000 years. If we eat McDonald's hamburgers and potatoes for 1,000 years, we will become taller, our skin white, and our hair blonde. Yeah. This actually happened. Anyway, moving on, four years later in 1975, McDonald's expanded to Causeway Bay in Hong Kong. Since then, McDonald's Hong Kong has set records for having some of the busiest and jam-packed McDonald's outlets in the world. Note that Hong Kong got its first McDonald's restaurant before mainland China, but more on that later. In 1979, McDonald's landed in Orchard Road, Singapore, the first McDonald's in Southeast Asia. As of the making of this video, McDonald's Singapore is home to the global chain's oldest employee. Go Guek Eng is a 93-year-old great-grandmother with 10 grandchildren and 20 great-grandchildren, and she continues to labor over a hot fryer, diligently working in one of Singapore's busy city outlets. She says she plans to keep working for as long as she's healthy. 1981 saw the arrival of McDonald's, or should I say, as it's colloquially called, to the Philippines. One of the more popular items on the menu here is McSpaghetti, which is often served with fried chicken. A year later in 1982, McDonald's opened its first outlet in a Muslim majority country in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Just like many of the countries I'll be getting into, they serve halal food. That is food permissible according to Islamic law. So Allah's name must be pronounced during slaughter, the animal slid at the throat, and the carcass completely drained of blood. As many of you know, pork is also forbidden. In 1984, Taiwan opened its first McDonald's in Taipei. Here, it seems very little is forbidden, as you can see from the cosplay culture of McDonald's staff during the holiday seasons. Come here if you want your chicken McNuggets, served by a Super McSane. Thailand is the next to welcome McDonald's, opening the first outlet in Bangkok. According to Ray Williams, who's eaten McDonald's in over 34 countries, McDonald's Thailand is the best one he's had. Now, this video isn't just about East or Southeast Asia, as some of you might be thinking. I'll soon be going over South, West, 
and even North Asia. And if you're unsure of which countries are considered part of Asia, at least according to the international community, you can check out my video series on Asian borders. Okay, this sets the scene for the first McDonald's in the Middle East. In 1986, McDonald's Turkey was born, starting with an outlet in Istanbul. Here, you'll find some Middle Eastern inspired menu items like the Turkish breakfast set and a double kufta burger. As for the rest of West Asia, well, it'll still be some time before McDonald's really makes its presence known in the region. Back to the east and five months later, Macau, which at the time was a Portuguese territory, got its first taste of McDonald's. Interestingly enough, you could also consider this the first Portuguese McDonald's, as at the time Portugal itself had yet to open a McDonald's restaurant, although this would go on to happen four years later. In 1988, McDonald's went Open with South Korea opening its first McDonald's in the Gangnam district of Seoul. McDonald's South Korea is also the first Asian McDonald's to sell alcohol, namely beer. As the 90s rolled around, so did the Russians. The collapse of the Soviet Union happened in 1991, but as for the year before, McDonald's had opened its first outlet in Pushkin Square, Moscow, currently one of the largest McDonald's in the world. I know many of you would associate Russia with Europe, but it is the only country in North Asia, so of course I had to include it. As for the first McDonald's in Siberia, the actual Asian side of Russia, the remote conditions there made the logistics of supply extremely complicated. Opening a McDonald's in Siberia period did not seem possible, at least not yet. However, it certainly was possible for China. The first Chinese McDonald's opened in Shenzhen, October 1990. Here, Ronald McDonald is often called Uncle McDonald. Currently, McDonald is quite popular in China. However, there is still a long way to go, especially when compared to KFC, the top foreign fast food chain in the country. In 1991, the Golden Arches arrived in Jakarta, Indonesia. The McDonald's here is known for having more rice-centric items, including the local chicken porridge dish, bubur ayam. 1992 saw Brunei welcome the fast food giant to its capital. Despite having operated in the country for over 14 years, McDonald's Brunei had only ever had two restaurants in its history. A slow growth, especially when compared to other countries. A year later, McDonald's began its great Middle East expansion, with its first stop in Israel. The McDonald's here is known for being the healthiest McDonald's in the world, with the use of light canola oil, excess of vegetables, and reduced fat content in their meat. Patties are also barbecued on charcoal rather than fried, and many of the branches are kosher. To avoid confusion, kosher branches are blue and white, instead of the trademark yellow and red. This redesign is one of the more radical departures we've ever seen from the company. McDonald's Israel has also garnered controversy over the years for stating they would not open restaurants in the contentious regions of the West Bank and Golan Heights, a long-term policy of theirs to not operate in McDonald's across the pre-1967 borders. This demarcation line was set out in the 1949 armistice agreement after the first Arab-Israeli war. Now less controversial but perhaps more bizarre is what happened recently in Saudi Arabia. McDonald's Saudi Arabia took out a full-page ad in a Saudi national newspaper swearing loyalty to the new crown. Prince. The first McDonald's in Saudi Arabia had opened in Riyadh just two months after Israel, the first in the Arabian Peninsula. And even though dissent is almost unheard of in this monarchical society, it's still kind of strange that a fast food corporation feels the need to be so vocal in their support of a newly ordained royal. 1994 to 1995 saw the mass continuation of this regional expansion, with Kuwait, Oman, Bahrain, United Arab Emirates, and Qatar all experiencing McDonald's for the very first time. In 1996, McDonald's arrived in Delhi, India, this time the very first in South Asia. Here, the McDonald's is something quite unique and different. Actually, with religious-based food taboos and a strong vegetarian tradition, it had to be. McDonald's India is the first to have no beef or pork on its menus. No beef for the Hindus and no pork for the Muslims. There's still chicken and fish though, and many options for vegetarians. In fact, India is the first country in the world to open a vegetarian-only McDonald's. Some vegetarian options you'll find are the Makalu Tiki Burger, which has a spiced potato and pea-based filling, this one's super popular, and the McSpicy Paneer, paneer being a type of soft Indian cheese. In case you're wondering, the Big Mac equivalent in India is the Maharaja Mac. Maha Raja. Next up, we return to West Asia with Jordan, Cyprus, and Lebanon all joining the McDonald's family. When I say Cyprus, however, I mean, of course, the Republic of Cyprus, not the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus, which lacks international recognition as a state. In fact, it's recognized by only one UN member state. I'm sure you can guess which one. So McDonald's does not exist in Northern Cyprus. You can't get a cheeseburger, you can't get a Big Mac. Actually, 
You can eat at a Big Mac, however, that's Big Mac one word, a chain of fake McDonald's restaurants that have set up shop in the north. Not surprisingly, McDonald's corporate headquarters have only recognized the ones in this country. But then, maybe not. McDonald's Pakistan was the next to open, with an outlet in Lahore. McDonald's was now starting to make its presence known in South Asia. And sure, there were many who were quite happy about it, but you know who wasn't happy? These guys. When another branch opened in the city of Quetta, which happened to be the home of the Taliban's ruling council, well, the Islamist militants weren't loving it. After some Taliban members sampled burgers and chicken McNuggets from the American fast food chain, they proclaimed their displeasure and disapproval of the taste. They said they didn't even consider it food, which may actually be the first time some of you agree with the Taliban. A month after opening in Pakistan, Sri Lanka followed suit with their first outlet in Colombo. We've already heard from one self-proclaimed McDonald's expert claiming Thailand did it the best. But for James McGowan, who's eaten McDonald's in 53 countries, he claimed it is in fact McDonald's Sri Lanka that tops the rest. His favorite item on the menu is the Sini Sambal Sandwich, a carefully folded egg omelette filled with cheese, peppery mayo, fried red onions, and a sweet and spicy onion relish. Not gonna lie, that sounds kinda good. 1999 saw McDonald's arrive smack dab in the Caucasus, with Georgia and Azerbaijan getting their first tastes, respectively Tbilisi and Baku. Currently, there's a McDonald's location in Batumi, Georgia, that's known for its architectural beauty and achievement. Arguably the chain's most exquisite outlet. Now, seven years went by before McDonald's once again made waves in a new Asian country. In 2006, Iraq got its first McDonald's. Actually, first and only McDonald's. In fact, the outlet wasn't even for the general public. It was created to serve only the US Army who was stationed in Baghdad. So, not sure if it should actually count. But don't feel too bad for the locals, because just like with Big Mac, one word, Iraqis are still free to try Madonal, located in Iraqi Kurdistan. As we start nearing the present time, there are only a few Asian countries left. But before we get to them, let's go back to Russia, namely the Asian side of Russia. Up until now, Siberians had to cross over to the European side if they were to ever try a Big Mac. But in 2013, McDonald's finally expanded to this remote region, having sorted out the logistics of it once and for all. Now, all Russians can have McDonald's. Mac food is, is a shit, kills us slowly. Some Russians can have McDonald's. In 2014, Vietnam joined a party with a branch in Ho Chi Minh City. Vietnamese people traditionally eat more pork and chicken. So it was interesting to see if Vietnamese tastes would give way to beef patties and fries. Add to that, the McDonald's value meal costs as much as several bowls of pho. My pronunciation sucks. As of now, the answer to that remains unclear as it's still early days. Which leads us to finally Kazakhstan. Certainly early days here as well as McDonald's had only just entered the market in 2016 with a restaurant in Astana. And if you've been keeping count, this is actually the first outlet in Central Asia. Initially, there were murmurings that McDonald's Kazakhstan was gonna to cater to its national cuisine, which many took to mean McHorse burgers and Pony McNuggets, but this turned out to be a miscommunication. Nothing more than a fantasy, like unicorns. And with that, we've just covered every Asian country to ever have a McDonald's. So has McDonald's conquered Asia? Well, maybe, depends on how you define it, but certainly these Asian countries may argue against it. Cambodia, Laos, Timor-Leste, Myanmar, Bangladesh, Bhutan, Nepal, Maldives, Afghanistan, Iran, Yemen, Syria, Armenia, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, Mongolia, and North Korea. There's something called the Golden Arches Theory of Conflict Prevention that states no two countries that have McDonald's franchises have ever gone to war with each other since each got its McDonald's. Apparently the reason for this correlation is because once a country has reached an economic development where it has a strong enough middle class to support a McDonald's network, it no longer has the interest to fight wars. Countries that have made strong economic ties with one another have too much to lose. There are perhaps a few inconsistencies with this theory, depending on what one considers a war. But as a general rule, there could be something to it. And if it is true, whether you love McDonald's or not, you gotta wish for the day that McDonald's North Korea becomes a reality. How's this for a tie-in? So here we have a cheeseburger, a Coke, and the unspillable Mighty Mug. This is the mug that supposedly won't fall over. I'm not buying it, let's test it out. Oh God. I'm actually terrified. Okay, let's get this ready. That's why I got McDonald's, Nina, to test this out. Okay, so what's the, why the cheeseburger?
Ready? Ready? Yeah. <laughs> oh god. Okay, it works. It grips to your desk when you try to knock it down, but it lifts naturally when you want to take a sip. They call this smart grip technology. Is that good? If you check out their website, you can choose from a wide selection of mugs and cups, whatever suits your needs. Walk power! Okay. If you want your own Mighty Mug, check out the link in the description below. And if you want to know the 10 reasons why, quote unquote, Asians don't get fat, you can find that out by clicking the video on top. Otherwise, click the one below if you prefer something else. I hope you enjoyed this topic, and if you have any questions or thoughts, let us know down below. Thanks for watching, hit that like button, and stay tuned for more interesting Asian-y videos.